the shoulder joint. Learning outcomes. Students should be able to describe the type, articular surfaces, fibrous capsule, synovial membrane, ligaments, important relations, movements, arterial and nerve supply of the shoulder joint. Discuss the factors contributing to the stability of the shoulder joint. Shoulder, glenohumeral, joint. Articular surfaces, head of humerus and glenoid cavity of scapula. Type. Morphologically, ball and socket synovial joint. Functionally, multiaxial joint which allows movements around three axes. The shoulder joint has a wide range of movements due to 1. Large convex humeral head 2. Shallow concave glenoid cavity 3. Lax capsule The fibrous capsule Attachments Medial lead to the glenoid margin Tendon of origin of long head of the biceps brachii is intracapsular Laterally to anatomical neck of humerus Perforations of the capsule, 3. 1. Anterior perforation for communication with subscapular bursa. 2. Posterior perforation for infraspinatus bursa, may be absent. 3. Lateral perforation for exit of the tendon of long head of biceps and its synovial sheath. The fibrous capsule of shoulder joint. Attachments again. Shoulder joint in X-ray. Synovial membrane. It lines the inner aspect of the fibrous capsule. It covers the intracapsular structures except the articular surfaces. It forms a tubular sheath for the tendon of long head of biceps. Shoulder joint has three supporting, accessory, ligaments. One coracohumeral ligament from the coracoid process to the greater tuberosity of the humerus it supports the superior aspect of the capsule. Two glenohumeral ligaments superior, middle and inferior ligaments from anterior margin of glenoid cavity to lesser tuberosity to support the front of the capsule. Three transverse humeral ligament between greater and lesser tuberosities bridging over the tendon of long head of biceps in its groove to keep it in position. Shoulder joint has three intracapsular structures. One labrum glenoidal, a fibrocartilaginous ring attached to the margin of glenoid cavity to deepen it. Two long head of biceps. Three synovial membrane. Shoulder joint is related to three bursae, outside the capsule. One subscapular bursa, anteriorly, communicates with joint cavity. Two infraspinatus bursa, posteriorly, may communicate with joint cavity. Three subacromial, subdeltoid, bursa, superiorly. It lies between the tendon of supraspinatus and coracoacromial arch. Extending deep to the deltoid between it and the lateral part of the capsule. It doesn't communicate with joint cavity. Relations of shoulder joint. One anteriorly, subscapularis. Two posteriorly, infraspinatus and teres minor. 3. Superiorly, supraspinatus, subacromial bursa and coracoacromial arch. 4. Inferiorly least supported side, long head of triceps, axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral vessels. Stability of shoulder joint, 5 factors. 1. Rotator cuff, this includes muscles inserted in the lesser and greater tuberosities, subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor, their tendons fuse with the capsule all around, except below, and they are the most important supporting factor of the shoulder joint. Two coracoacromial arch, two processes and a ligament, prevents upward displacement of the humeral head. Three long head of biceps, supports the humeral head from above. Four long head of triceps, supports the humeral head from below, during abduction, only factor in abduction. 5. Labrum glenoidale deepens the glenoid cavity. Again factors for stability of shoulder joint. 5 factors. Rotator cuff. Coracoacromial arch. 
long head of biceps from above. Long head of triceps from below only factor in abduction. And labrum glenoidale. Note that. Dislocation of the shoulder joint occurs commonly downwards at the least supported side. This may lead to injury of the axillary nerve which runs below the capsule close to the surgical neck of the humerus. Arterial blood supply, 3. Suprascapular artery. Anterior circumflex humeral artery. And posterior circumflex humeral artery. Nerve supply, also 3. Suprascapular nerve. Lateral pectoral nerve. And axillary nerve. Movements of shoulder joint, 7 movements. One flexion, is done by muscles anterior to the joint pectoralis major, clavicular head, coracobrachialis and anterior fibers of deltoid. Two extension, is done by muscles posterior to the joint latissimus dorsi, teres major, posterior fibers of deltoid and pectoralis major, sternocostal head. Three abduction, by muscle superior to the joint the movement is initiated by supraspinatus, 0 to 15 degree, and completed by middle fibers of deltoid up to 90 degree. For adduction, is done by the three muscles inserted in the biceps group pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi and teres major in addition to subscapularis. 5. Medial rotation, by muscles which are inserted in the biceps group pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi and teres major in addition to anterior fibers of deltoid and subscapularis. 6. Lateral rotation, by muscles inserted in the posterior surface of greater tubercity infraspinatus and teres minor plus posterior fibers of deltoid. 7. Circumduction, flexion then abduction then extension and adduction. Movements of abduction of the arm above the head. Range or degree of movement. Joint concerned. And muscles producing the movement. Key facts. All muscles connecting the thoracic cage to upper limb, four muscles of pectoral region, act on shoulder girdle except pectoralis major, on shoulder joint. All muscles connecting the vertebral column to upper limb. Five muscles of the back, act on shoulder girdle except latissimus dorsi, on shoulder joint. Pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi are called the climbing muscles and act on shoulder joint. All scapular muscles, 6, act on shoulder joint. Please answer the following quiz. My best wishes. Haini Wahib.